Hi there. In this Moser Makes video, I'm going to show you how I made these wooden planter stands. Each stand consists of two halves which fit together with a lap joint and form a base that's strong enough to hold these concrete planters I made in my last video. As with most woodworking projects, this one started in my shop with some fresh lumber. Here I'm using maple. I roughly laid out my cuts and determined I could get all my pieces from three of these boards. Then, for each board, I flattened one side using a jointing sled and planed the other side down to match. With my boards smooth and flat, I laid out my actual cuts and cross-cut all the pieces to length on my table saw sled. In the video description, I'll link to a write-up on my website giving the exact dimensions for all the pieces. I made three different size stands, but the same design could be scaled to any length within reason. Next, I ripped each board to the final widths. All of the pieces for the stands are the same width, so I only needed to set my fence once and then repeat all the cuts. With all the pieces cut, the next step is to work on the joinery, starting with the half lap joints that will connect the center cross pieces. To do this, I first made two cuts to establish the outside edges of each notch. I used the micro jig match fit dado stop to help with this. This jig is normally supposed to be clamped to a fence and used in combination with a miter gauge, but by adding some spacer blocks to reach the different dado stops, I found it can work on a crosscut sled too. After this, you just need to make a series of cuts to remove the rest of the material. As with always, table saws are a very dangerous tool, so always be very mindful of where your fingers are and where the blade is. Both sides of the lap joint are identical. We just flipped one upside down for assembly. This makes cutting them all easy. The trick to getting a good fit is to cut some test pieces first before cutting your actual pieces. Don't cut your actual pieces until you're sure you have everything set up properly. Next, I marked out reference lines for cutting the joinery between the legs and cross pieces. I will be cutting a mortise into each side and joining them with these floating tenons. I will be using the Beadlock Basic Loose Tenon Kit for this. Other than trying it on a few test pieces, this was my first time using this jig, and I'm interested to see how it works and if it's a good low-cost option for cutting floating tenons. Once the jig is set up, all you do is line it up with your reference line, clamp it all together, and then begin drilling out the holes. Following the guide, you drill these three holes, then slide the guide over and drill two holes between the first two to create a mortise that comes out looking like this. Drilling these out this way is rather slow and tedious and creates a lot of chips and dust. The mortise came out pretty clean, but I later found out this jig isn't the most accurate and many of these came out crooked, despite having the jig firmly clamped to the workpiece. I did get smarter along the way and set up my dust collector to catch many of the chips. Now I got ready to give all the pieces a sand before assembly. Anyone else still have a number of corded tools but wish everything could be cordless? I hate dealing with extension cords. Even though these would need some more sanding later, I wanted to give everything a quick sand now because some of the corners would be hard to reach after they are assembled. Next. I got ready to glue the first one together, and this is where I ran into a problem. The tenon sock that is sold to go with this kit hardly fit into the mortises. If something doesn't fit right, don't try and force it together. You should stop and take the time to fix it. Instead, I decided to go ahead and spread some glue around and use this clamp to force the pieces together. The issue with this was that since I hadn't been able to do a test fit, I didn't find out till after I had forced the pieces together that they didn't line up quite right. Also, since they fit so tight, all the glue was probably pushed away from where it needs to be and down to the bottom. Apparently, even if you're careful, this beadlock basic jig isn't very accurate. I found that the mortise ended up crooked on many of the pieces. Given that the crooked ones were all crooked in the same direction, I'm guessing that the rotational force of the drill bit caused the bit to wander slightly and pull the guide with it, and the jig itself isn't sturdy enough to overcome this. Perhaps it was an issue with how I used it, 
but overall I was less than impressed with the beadlock basic, and at $30 I guess you get what you pay for. There's a larger version of the beadlock called the beadlock pro, which looks sturdier and probably doesn't have this problem, but I haven't tried it. I was able to pull this one apart, but ended up with tenon stuck in two of the pieces. I'll show you how I dealt with this later. First, I would need to figure out a better way to proceed before assembling the rest. I found that sanding down the tenon stock worked pretty well. Once they were thinner, I could fit them together easier, and for the crooked ones, if I sanded down the tenon a little extra, they had enough wiggle where I could straighten them out and then use a generous amount of glue to fill the glamps inside between the mortise and the tenon stock. Not ideal, but it'll work to save my planners. With my thinner tenon stock ready, I got ready to glue them together. First doing a test run without glue to nail down how I would clamp them. Then, I added the glue and clamps, but my camera stopped recording here. Here's what it looked like after it was assembled and clamped together. While that glue was drying, I turned my attention back to the pieces involved in the first failed assembly attempt. To deal with the loose tenon stuck in the mortise, I let the glue dry and then sawed off the protruding tenon. I sawed it off a little proud and then cleaned it up with a chisel. After this, I marked the reference line again and re-drilled the mortise. I had two I needed to do this for, and the new holes seemed to line up just where the original ones were. Again, I followed the same steps to sand down the tenon stock and then assemble the two leg pieces to the cross piece. At this point, the stands are almost done, but I found that if I lined up the cross pieces, the legs weren't perfectly even. One was a touch longer, and this caused there to be a little wobble once you set them up. So I clamped everything together and used the crosscut sled to trim all the legs to the exact same length. Now they fit together and stood up without a wobble. Nice. I did have to trim the bottom of the legs on all three of my planter stands. Finally, some sanding and some finish, and they were done. Here they are. Thanks for watching. Bye.